Hi guys, I'm really excited today to meet Farooq Kamran, a young mechanical engineer from Lahore in Pakistan who works at no less than one of the most desirable and exotic supercar makers on the planet. I'm talking about Koenigsegg in Sweden. What is his journey to get to this fantastic position working at that cutting edge maker of some of the most extraordinary cars on the planet? Let's meet him and let's find out. Hey, how you doing? Fantastic to finally meet you. So, Farouk, introduce yourself. Tell people who you are and the remarkable thing that you currently do. Well, thank you so much for having me, Shazada. It's it's a it's an honor to be here. Uh, to be honest, and uh, it's a pleasure talking to you as well. So, thank you so much for that and uh, having me here today. Um, I actually come from Pakistan. I live. I belong uh, to Lahore. Uh, my family lives over there. Uh, it's been a while. I've been uh, in here in here in Sweden almost two and a half years. And uh, yeah, I basically am a mechanical engineer. I studied at University of Engineering and Technology in Lahore, and um, I did jobs for like almost ten, nine, ten years ish. And then finally, I did my masters during COVID. Um, after COVID. Of course, I uh, tried to find a job uh, so that I can, uh, uh, you know, get hired and, and employed in uh, in some company in Sweden. And um, yeah, finally, I am in Konigsegg now. Konigsegg. So, You're yes. in Konigsegg. That yes. is absolutely <laughs> awesome. So just in yes. case, if there's anybody out there that somehow is oblivious to the fact that what is Konigsegg, just explain yes. to people what is Konigsegg and what they do. Well, Koenigsegg is uh, not too big uh, of a company, but it's it is very sh in its own way a shining armor in the automobile uh, industry, and uh, they make world's fastest cars uh, that are production cars, of course. And uh, since uh, I think 1994, uh, Christian von Koenigsegg he started this company uh, with an idea of making like super fast, hyper speed, uh, world's fastest cars. And he has been able to achieve that and got some world records for the cars as well. And um, yeah, so it's like very, very, you know, uh, a company that everybody has, has as a mechanical engineering uh, engineer has dreamed about to be there. So I was finally be, I was like lucky enough to get a job in here as well. So uh, now I've been working over here for almost uh, what, like five uh, five or something months so yeah but it, it is a company that is like has a very long track record of almost 30 35 years and they have been in the, one of the world's best automobile car company manufacturers we're going to come back to that and we'll talk a little bit about you know the stuff that conexec do because some of the stuff they do is pretty cutting edge you know and it's mm -hmm. it's, it's stuff that nobody yep. else has even attempted never mind actually achieved but before yep. we do that Let's address the like the big one in the in the room. It's like there aren't many. I mean, this is you know, my channel is called Brown Car Guy. We're brown car guys, right? Yeah. There aren't many brown people in the industry, let alone working, you know, at yeah. that level in one of the most unique and you know extraordinary exotic car manufacturers on the planet. Mm -hmm. And you're you're from Pakistan. I mean, are, are there many people like yourself? And and you know what I mean. Are there many people in the industry at the level that you're at? I mean, not that many. Uh, because since I've been in Konegag, actually, uh, the post that got very, very viral, when I got a lot of messages and appreciation from different people for, uh, because of that post. Uh, but actually, it said that I was the only one uh, in Konegag. But I recently found out that there was another one, uh, another Pakistani engineer working as well. But he's working with the electronics of the car. So he's a, like an electrical engineer. Um, so, yeah, but I'm the only one who is working with the mechanical aspect of the cars or designing parts and tools, uh, jigs and fixtures for the car as well. So, yeah, but there is another one uh, who is also from Pakistan and he is working in Koenigsegg as well. What's his name? Uh, his name is Umar, Umar Shazad. Umar Shazad, oh, good name. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. We'll have to get him on as well at some point. That's fantastic. Absolutely. But it's always great to hear and it's always inspirational, you know, yeah. when you when you when you meet people like yourself and mm -hmm. other people that are managing to 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 crack these levels in the industry, you know, which absolutely. you know we haven't seen before. But it's absolutely fantastic. But however, let's address the other question in the room. So you're a Conexec, which is possibly one of the most desirable brands in, in the world of cars. Mm -hmm. Are you a car guy? 
Well, I am. I love cards. And uh, since I was a child, I, I, I used to play a lot of games. And in those games, uh, of course, there was a Koenigsegg card as well, always. Uh, one of them was Rogera. That was one, Agera, which was one of my favorites at that time. And now since uh, then, they have created three or four more cards now. And uh, one of them is Yesko, which is my absolutely favorite car right now. So it's a V5 twin turbo, and it's it's like a beauty and a beast, of course. That's incredible. We'll, we'll touch on the current products later on. But going back to your original, uh, where you started playing with cars and stuff. And it's yeah. quite interesting that it, 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 that's where it starts for a lot of people, doesn't it? It's like when you're right back at childhood and mm -hmm. you're playing with the toy cars and yeah. you're getting... I mean, even with Christian von Koenigsegg himself, um, I believe because I, I met him a few years ago, actually quite a few years ago, and he, he got into cars from a cartoon series, didn't he? There was a cartoon yes. series that he used to watch, yep. and that's yep. kind of what inspired him to do what he's doing, exactly. which is a fantastic story. So yeah. when you were growing up in Lahore, what input did you have in terms of the world of cars? And, you know, how did you, I mean, so for example, I was growing up in the UK, I was exposed to car magazines and, and this sort of car mm -hmm. culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what input did you have at that time, which encouraged you to, to not only look at cars as a hobby, but possibly as a career? So the thing is, I have worked for car manufacturers before. I worked for Honda and I was in Oman for two years as well. So I worked over there. But as a child, I think uh, the gaming industry was the one that actually right. led me to this because, of course, uh, these super fast hyper cars are like, oh, oh you can only see them on the on, in some games because they're not that many in Pakistan, of course, so you can't yeah. see them. Uh, so, but yeah, I think uh, games was one of the inspirations that I got from uh, uh, as a, as an engineer, and I used to love cars. So, I think that's that's which games did you play? Like Gran Turismo, or um, I played like a lot of games, such as um, in the beginning, I would say it was Need for Speed. Need for that's Speed, yeah. Ones. Yeah. And then I got into a couple others like GTA or um, Asphalt and some other games as well. So, uh, yeah, as I think uh, the gaming thing helped me a lot to, you know, to fine tune that side of me and then get to know the love of cars and get into doing more. One of the things that you've done is as an engineer... I guess, you know, if you, if you said for brown people, what's the three main career choices? You go, you know, engineer, doctor, uh, or lawyer, right? So you've yeah. definitely gone down one of the career paths, you know, but yeah, then that's, did, that's did you, <laughs> was, to be was honest, that... I think if I would have, wouldn't have been an engineer, I would have been some, probably a singer, probably. <laughs> no way, really? <laughs> yeah, I would say so. Is that a bit of a hobby for you now? Uh, yes, I used to, like, not that much nowadays, but yeah, I, I sing, and uh, it's sort of like a ha hobby, but yeah, I think I would have been an, uh, a singer or an actor. Are you, in, are, you, were you, are you in a band or something like that? I wish I was, but uh, not anymore. When Back in the days when I was in the university, I used to perform on, like, a lot of stages and then competitions, the TV, even I have sang on uh, radio as well, TV. All radio. right. <laughs> So, what kind yeah. of songs? Uh, mostly Pakistani or Indian songs. So, yeah, but uh, I was a really, really nice singer, I think. All right, if you do say so yourself. We'll have to, see, well, we'll have to send me a clip. You'll have to send me a clip so I can insert it here. Unless you want to sing now. <laughs> or, or, yeah, we can do that, of course. Go on, then. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, well, let me think about a song. And then, mm. All right, let's see. Mm. All right, so there's a song these days that has been, uh, like, a really a sort of a sensation right now because uh, coke studio song possibly. yeah you must yeah. yeah yeah so I'll, I'll just give it a go go on <clears throat> just let me <clears throat> all right agla ma majboori nu aan jaan di pasode nu zehar bane ha teri जावा मैं पूरी नू आना सी ओ नहीं आया दिल बाग बाग मेरा टक्कर आया कागा बोल के दस जावे पावा क्यों दे चोरी नू रामा च बावा च तैनू लुकावा गोई मैं नू ना रोके मेरे ढोल जुदाई आदी तैनू खबर की वे होवे आ जावे दिल तेरा पूरा भी ना होवे there you go. <laughs> that, 
That deserves a round of applause. That is extraordinary. I didn't just praise myself. Of course, I had to just, you know, <laughs> let it go. Just let you listen. No, honestly, you. mate, that's beautiful. That was fantastic. Well Thank done. You. That's really. Hang on, I've got to stop the cheering now. <laughs> Thank you very much. How do I stop the cheering? Stop it. Stop, stop, stop. Yeah, okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, your audience is just cheering. But yeah, that was excellent. That's amazing. So, Thank is this you. something that you're going to continue as a hobby, or um, you know, because I think in, uh, you never know how life uh, where yeah. life gets you. To be honest, so I I don't know. Maybe someday I will become a singer too. So because I have a lot of you know these things that I wanted to achieve in my life, and uh, one of them is to be a singer as well. So. Who knows? Do they have Do they have the equivalent of something like, um, uh, you know, Sweden's Got Talent or The Voice or yeah, something like that? <laughs> yeah, they do have that, and it, it, they do it in uh, Stockholm. So yeah, probably one day, probably I'll find myself in there. <laughs> you never know. I think you should definitely give that a go at some yeah. point. So the singing engineer at Konigsegg, yeah. <laughs> that's brilliant. Yeah. But going back again to your journey, because you talked about you worked in 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 in, in other car manufacturers and stuff like that. But yeah. right back to Pakistan. So when you first started to embark on your professional journey, journey, mm -hmm. how did you? Um, where did you go? What did you work for? What did you do? Well, when I did my bachelor's, the first job that I got was actually in one of the companies in Multan uh, called Pak Arab Fertilizers. So I was working... Fertilizers? At... Yeah, that's, that's the first <laughs> job that I got. Yeah. <laughs> so I was working as a... You must, you must have thought, oh, well, this is, this is crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, literally and figuratively. <laughs> No, but it was a really nice company, I would say. And uh, yeah, so I worked over there as a trainee engineer. That was the beginning of my career. And then the second job that I got was in uh, Honda. Honda. All right. We have just outside of Lahore. So I was working uh, in, over there as a field uh, engineer. Um, so I was a maintenance engineer, basically. But uh, yeah, I worked over there for over a year or almost two. And um, yeah, that was, that was the beginning, I would say, that... Uh, um, of course, that was the first sort of car related um, thing that you were doing. But what's a field engineer? What do you do exactly as a field engineer? As a field engineer, you have to uh, take care of the maintenance of the cars. Mm -hmm. uh, what you, what I did on that job was to actually learn how um, the in internals of the engine or how a car actually works on a very very deep deeper level, which I wasn't exposed to before. Uh, because, yeah, but during my education in uh, UT, I was also, we, we had a course of automobile and uh, we get to know about the basics of the engine and how everything works. But I think the deeper knowledge that I got was from Honda and they had a lot of trainings and a lot of uh, things that they, 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 they make you learn and get certified for as well. Uh, so I was also certified a Honda technician uh, as well. And uh, yeah, it was it was a fun job. Uh, and that was the beginning to be honest. But then afterwards, uh, I think uh, when I started my own business, because uh, after doing like job for over five years, I went into and took a chance on myself to start a business, which was also very, very, you know, uh, a successful business for me. And uh, it, although it was a short one, because I, wor I worked uh, as a business person for over like five years, but then because of COVID, I had to shut it down. And then uh, I ha and then there was also a dream of me to do my master's or pursue my master's sometime in my life. So I did that from Sweden. And then finally, yeah, uh, I think um, I tried to find a job. The first job that I got in Sweden was uh, an, an, a, a car company as well. Or not a car company in a direct sense, but they were making electric uh, car parking chargers for electric cars. So now, I was, let's let's just pause on that because that's really interesting. And I and I saw on your on your LinkedIn that you did that, and mm -hmm. I was fascinated by it because I mean obviously EVs is a mass, massive discussion right now. It's a lot, lots yeah. going on in that field, and exactly. a lot of debate obviously rain you know focuses on range and how to charge these things, and you know that yeah. that's becoming a big issue. And you guys were looking at under under the tarmac charging, which is something yeah. that's been discussed, but I haven't seen it realized in in the real world. But but yeah. you actually you had the technology. Yeah, yeah. So the company was actually making these uh, chargers, or you can say car parking chargers. Also, along with that, they were making a, a, a normal road 
uh, electric so that when once you drive on that road your car will get charged at the same time uh, so, so I was you, so you're charging mm-hmm. as you're driving on yep, this road yep. that's wow. the idea yeah and we were able to achieve it as well it's just like it's in a prototype phase right now mm-hmm. uh, because it was a startup company but yeah I was working as a design engineer for them as well but that's extraordinary. I mean, just the complexity of doing that, you know, I mean, if you think about thousands and thousands of miles of road, I mean, is it even feasible to go down that route of, of laying charging cables underneath tarmac? To be honest, it's it's going to be a massive I- infrastructure that is required to achieve something like that. And uh, oh, but the thing is, the resources, the technology, it's getting better and better. So you, mm. I think it would be possible to charge your car because that's the only way I see forward uh, with electric cars. And uh, yeah, if you have the charging on the go, uh, that would be a game changer. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know in, in, I think in Germany, isn't it, where they've tried doing the overhead stuff uh, mm-hmm. with the cables, but that's for like lorries and things like yeah, that. That's, but, what, that's for bigger vehicles. Yeah. But in terms of battery technology yourself, if you've had a chance to work in that industry and you've been looking at it, because it's a big debate. And somebody mm-hmm. recently sent me a, a link for uh, another kind of lithium, lithium what was it? not lithium iron, but another kind of lithium battery that was being developed in America, where mm-hmm. apparently it, it, the charging time is much quicker and the uh, degradation is, is much lower mm-hmm. on it. How mm-hmm. fast do you see this technology evolving for EVs? I mean, the efforts and the resources that the investors and all over the world companies are pooling in right now, I think it would be, it has to be achieved uh, within a couple of years, I think less than 10 years. Um, and it has to be perfected because uh, otherwise I think uh, the survival of electric car would be very difficult. And I'm sure that there are enough resources right now working on this technology to make it perfect. And uh, it's going to be possible probably within uh, 10 years or some. You know, when I was in Pakistan uh, just recently over the summer, um, they launched a car there, or at least they launched the, the prototype of a car that's supposed to be Pakistan's first indigenous EV. I don't know if you got a chance to, to catch up with that. But it was, uh, yeah, so the Jizari, they, they, they've yeah. called it the Nur E75. Yes. Yeah. And they're talking about developing that wholly in Pakistan, which yeah. is a very noble effort. And I applaud Absolutely. them. And I shall be actually talking to them a little bit further about it as well. But, you know, knowing Pakistan, you know, growing up in Pakistan, do you think that there is a, even a capacity to adopt to EVs in, in that place? Well, I think, uh, to be honest, I, we think that Pakistan is, uh, you know, it's not going to handle the, the load or the efforts that we are going to put in uh, or the people would not be, they're not ready for it yet. But I think if we can make an electric vehicle affordable, uh, it, that's like Pakistan is one of the best markets to sell because it's a big market. I see in Sweden, it's like, what, uh, 10 million people in the whole country. And uh, in Pakistan, it's a lot of potential people actually have those talents. And I think that inside Pakistan, we can develop such cars. And uh, if, if I get an opportunity to go back, I would go back and absolutely help out with the companies. And uh, of course, use my knowledge and potential uh, to, to benefit my own country. Uh, so it's, it's an, uh, it would be an absolute joy for me to work for Pakistan. You know, I have always been very, very patriotic. And uh, I love to work for my country. And that's why I started my own business as well at that time. Uh, and of course, I, th- I think I saw a lot of, you know, these comments on the post that got viral. And then people were like saying, I'm not Pakistani or I don't belong uh, to Pakistan. And I live in uh, in Sweden for a very long time or I have been born over here. But that's not true, though. Those are just rumors. I actually belong to Pakistan and I come from Pakistan. It's been a couple of years that I've been here. So the love of Pakistan is not, never going to get away. Uh, so, and I think, yes, uh, the, the electric vehicle, it, it has a potential on in all over the world. And, um, in my opinion, uh, the, right now, the hybrid plug-in hybrid cars are the best solution, uh, because they, they, they utilize both aspects like on a, on a, on a perfect level and, uh, f- to go fully electric. Yeah, that would be awesome because that would help the environment, which has been damaged a lot, to be honest, uh, would help a lot with that. And uh, we absolutely need electric cars uh, to sustain uh, the humanity. In fact, because we there have has been so much damages to the uh, to the world, and the, because of global warming, it has been a chaos. So we over here to, to be, we we take care of that, and we we want to make sure that we make an impact in the world uh, and make it sustainable and uh, reduce the carbon footprint. 
Uh, it's very noble to hear that, you know, you would consider even going back to Pakistan to work on, on the fledgling car industry, which, you know, we can we can touch a little bit more on that in a minute. But I want to just pick up on what you just said there about the comments that you've received after your post went viral. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that you got comments like that? What do you think is the perception of people? Do people feel that, you know, oh, he couldn't be doing that? He's from Pakistan. He couldn't be doing this job. Is, is that, you know? It, to be honest, it's a very, very sad situation. But yes, that is true. People think that they're not capable enough to achieve something like that because I don't know why it is like that. But it's not like uh, if you come from Pakistan, you can't achieve or come into a company that uh, that is sort of like this company, uh, my company, Conexec. But I know that people in Pakistan, they have a lot of potential. And if they just believe in themselves, we, we can achieve anything. And, um, but yeah, I, I, and I don't dwell on those comments to be honest, because I don't care that, um, people like people say that to me, but I care about how people think. So, uh, I don't think we should think like that. And I come from Pakistan and anybody who comes from Pakistan ha can achieve or do what I did. And, um, and I encourage people to think positive and come forward uh, and out of their comfort zone, uh, because I know that there is a lot of talent uh, hidden in Pakistan. I think this is a very important point because the negativity is is toxic, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And I think yeah. it and it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy. But I think you know for exactly. people to just make that assumption that well he's Pakistani so he can't be doing this. It's exactly. like it's just the wrong approach, isn't it? And I yeah, think that yeah. one of the key things today in talking to you is mm -hmm. is the opportunity to I guess inspire. And yeah. to encourage other people that, you know, Absolutely. there is there is a chance, there is an opportunity. Absolutely. Absolutely. There is no doubt about that. So, uh, and some of the comments were really funny as well, because somebody said that, Kisi journal ka beta hoga. so I was like, no, man, I'm not like, I come from a very, very humble background. So my father was, a, 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 he was a professor in, in one of the colleges in uh, Pakistan, in Lahore. And I come from a very humble background. It's not like that. I've been, uh, I've, I've, I've been born with a uh, with a silver spoon or something. So, Do you think that this is a unique thing amongst our community in particular, where we kind of, if we can't understand how people achieve things, we prefer to knock them down rather than to try and understand, you know, how how to get there. And I think if we just come out of that, it is true. And if we just come out of that, you will see that how many people we will be seeing in companies like Koenigsegg, you know, because I see a lot of Indians working in the company. It's yeah. like almost I've seen at least 20 people from yeah. India working in the company. Yeah. Uh, but like one, only one of them and which I, by the way, didn't even know because I also recently joined the company. But yeah, there there is a very huge difference uh, between mm -hmm. or the contrast that you see from India and Pakistan. Uh, and I think India has done a far better job at uh, making sure that their engineers or their their uh, people work in companies like this to earn a name for their country too. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think we can do the same. It's not like we are very different, and uh, and uh, there is a lot of talent in Pakistan. So I just encourage people to come forward, just believe in themselves, and uh, just take the faith of leap. You know, there, if there's young people watching this right now, mm -hmm. what? would you tell them what would you advise them particularly i'm talking about people and young people and young pakistani let's i mean i was going to say young pakistanis in pakistan but actually young pakistanis or pakistani origin people all over the world because even like for example here in the uk you have a community that yeah. maybe feels that they can't achieve yeah. positions like this yeah. you know exactly. what, what advice would you give people I would just say to believe in themselves because I have seen it in my entire life that if you just believe in yourself far, uh, uh, fair, uh, like enough, uh, Allah will always help you. So he's always has your back. And uh, if you just take that uh, faith of leap, as I said before as well, uh, leap of faith, you can achieve uh, the, the dreams that you think of. And I know that Pakistan, Pakistanis have bigger dreams and it's just that they don't get enough opportunities and our government doesn't help enough. Uh, but if they do, we can achieve a lot. And uh, I would encourage them to, you know, just don't give up and uh, continue what you're doing and uh, always do what you love. Uh, because I think if you uh, do something that you love, it doesn't become a job. It becomes your passion or a hobby. You don't, you don't even feel spending time on it. So you enjoy your time. It's like uh, when I was, uh, you know, working uh, back in Pakistan for myself as a, an entrepreneur, time passed by really, really fast. 
and i loved and i enjoyed what i did you know and i always have a dream of building my own company one day so just believe in yourself and i'm 100% sure that allah will help and uh, you you will succeed and shine yeah i can i can completely um, back that up back that statement up because you know um i was speaking to um a good friend of mine one of india's top journalists adil uh, jaldaru khanwala wonderful wonderful guy he was in town recently mm-hmm. and um I said to him, you know, um, you, are you on holiday? Or are you working? You know, uh, whilst he was in London. Yeah. And he said to me, he said, Shazad, my whole life is a holiday, you know, because I, I, I love what I do. And I said, yeah, exactly. exactly. You know, yeah. same here. And yeah. I think that the other interesting parallel, what you've just said, and, and, I, and I get this too, is like when I tell people that I've been a car journalist and content creator for over three decades, they're like, mm-hmm. what? You know, <laughs> they find mm-hmm. that literally hard to believe. And when I start to explain all the stuff that I've done, they're just like, well, how is that possible that somebody like you did all of that stuff? And I'm like, well, it is possible. Like you say, if you follow your dreams and you stick with it and you're persistent mm-hmm. and you're consistent, yep. Yep. then you can do it. Going back to Pakistan, one of the things that I noticed, and I visited Pakistan in uh, winter, uh, uh, December last year, and then again summer this year, and that was after a huge gap of many, many years. I hadn't been back for a long time. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that struck me was the explosion in car culture and mm-hmm. automotive, whether it be motorsports oh, yeah. or a modification or classic oh, yeah. cars. Have you found this yourself that in Pakistan? Do you think this is a more recent thing or do you think it's always been there, but now it's sort of coming to the fore? I think it has exploded because uh, I went back uh, to Pakistan uh, after uh, com- after coming to Sweden for over two years. I, I when I ba- went back, I saw a lot of car companies working over there, a lot of new brands on the roads, um, which we which is not very normal because we mostly see Honda and Toyota. Yeah, Honda uh, and Toyota, like the industry leaders for like exactly, decades, you know. Exactly. But now I think the culture has been changing because I see a lot of these new brands, even Pakistani brands that are uh, on the road as well. And uh, I think it's it's exploding right now. And it's a good thing. And I think it, it is because of the Imran Khan's government because he led to that. And uh, of course, we need more cars. We don't want to have a, a monopoly where cars are getting expensive and more and more yeah. unaffordable, you know. Uh, yeah. It has to be a fair competition between other com- car manufacturers as well. And then then let's see uh, who wins, uh, who provides the good quality because people like quality, people like prices because they ha- it has to be economical as well. Yeah. So I think it has been um, a much more developed uh, automobile co- uh, industry in Pakistan <clears throat> I'm sorry, than before. So, and it, it is only fair that only a new car company should come in and step in and uh, take over because... Uh, we need more f- manufacturers and we need more uh, variety of cars and good cars, quality cars uh, in Pakistan. So and I think it, it has exploded. <laughs> and talking of home, homegrown talent, I mean, touching on what we were talking about earlier, mm-hmm. I mean, the fact that there is all this culture now and, you know, you, you can attend car shows, you can mm-hmm. go karting, you yeah. can go yeah. to classic car events. Do you think that this is going to encourage more people to enter the industry and to develop the career path similar to yours? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I think uh, Park Wheels has also organized some of these yeah. uh, car events, yeah. as well, which is very, very, you know, fantastic. Yeah, I attended one of their events in Karachi them. in December. It's brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Because young Pakistanis, once they uh, be a part of these kinds of shows, seem like these uh, unique cars. I think it develops their interests in in cars as well. So I think it's a very good job that uh, Park Wheels is also doing. Mm, brilliant absolutely brilliant now let's come back to you um when you decided to do your masters and specifically it was to do with with, with mechanical engineering with cars right engineering, yeah. yes. so why did you choose sweden i mean i mean there are i mean there's institutes here in the uk there's stuff in america but sweden must have been an unusual choice especially for somebody from pakistan right it is true and uh, to be honest i think uh, god, uh, uh, god works in mysterious ways and uh, probably I had to be here to become a part of my dream car company. <laughs> so you never know. One, sh- one link leads to another and then you find yourself in the right spot where you always wanted to be. Uh-huh. So I think... Did you learn the language? I, I do speak a, a bit of it, yes. Uh, like I can speak conversational Swedish. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> How so, long did it take you to learn that? I mean, <laughs> I'm still learning. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think it took me around a year to pick up like those basic common words that you uh-huh. mostly use during your your life. Uh, but 
the thing is i also have love for lang- learning languages and right, i also right. learned arabic as well while i was in all university. right uh-huh. i speak like almost now six languages oh wow oh well, so you one of these you one of these lucky guys that pick up uh, languages <laughs> well you lived so you lived yeah. in oman did you say yes i lived in oman for two years yeah oman is so beautiful where were you in oman yes. in muscat I was stationed in Muscat, yeah. the, the mountain yeah. terrain around Muscat itself yeah. and the history of that city is yes. just fantastic. It is. It is one of the one of the beautiful countries I've seen. I've visited like all all from the north to the south of the country and it's really beautiful. Have you been down to Salala? I did. I did. It was it's it, amazing. Yeah, it's, a, it's a big contrast from if you come yeah. from the t- yeah. northern part because it's like really? windy, like beautiful sceneries, like this yeah. fog and I mean it was yeah. beautiful. It, so, and they contrast so much, isn't it? You could go from being at the beach to being in the Amazon jungle to being in the rolling hills of Scotland all yeah, year, within contrast. an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yes. it's, it's, it's an extraordinary contrast. place. But coming yeah. back to Sweden, so which mm-hmm. institute did you join in, in, in Sweden when you wanted to uh, further your studies? Uh, the thing is, I applied for four. Uh, the, the top priority that I had was to Shamers, but I actually applied a bit late. Uh, and uh, that's the one of the reasons I got admission in another uh, university which was on my second priority hawk school and west uh, which actually specializes in manufacturing engineering so i i did my masters from there in manufacturing engineering and then uh, yeah it was for uh, one although it was actually for two years but since i haven't been studying for like over nine ten years so i find i found it a bit difficult to focus on just you know theoretical work so I shortened it to one year and then I finished it in one year. And then, uh, uh, yeah, I think I had to had a hands-on experience because when you come from a background that you've been working for over nine, 10 years, you have to get your hands dirty. Mm-hmm. So I just quickly finished it up and then I started uh, and went back to the industry. Now, Sweden doesn't have a massive car industry by any means. No, did, you, no. did you have an inkling that you, went, you were heading towards Koenigsegg or that was a dream or uh, you, you wanted to do something like that? Um, you know, I think back in my mind, uh, I have I, I, always loved the brand. And uh, you will find it, to be honest, a bit uh, humorous because I actually didn't know where Koenigsegg was from. Although I did knew the company that it exists, it makes like these super fancy fast cars. But I didn't know that which country it was from. So when I got to know that it was it is from Sweden, so somehow I think the things just started pooling in together, and then finally I found I found myself in Koenigsegg. So uh, as I, and as I said, God works in mysterious ways. So I think the reason for me being in Sweden was actually uh, what, b- because Allah wanted me to be here, and yeah. He guided me through different scenarios, and then just. You know, I didn't. I was blind. I didn't even know that it exists in Sweden. But I finally found myself here. So I think it's it's uh, it's Allah who knows the the better thing, uh, the masleha on on the things that how actually everything works. So in so, terms of joining Koenigsegg, how did that come about? Was that like uh, was it a job application? Was it an internship or what happened? So the thing is, they were looking for a manufacturing engineer, uh, uh, engineering uh, guys, and I apl- in my in my previous company somebody was actually he mentioned that we also we were talking about cars and when i was working for my previous company in sweden uh, somebody uh, uh, when we were sitting together mentioned that we also have a car company in sweden called koenigsegg and that's when i got to know about it because i didn't know that it existed in sweden i knew that it is it, it yeah. exists in some part of the world but didn't know that it was right in the on the corner <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, yeah, so he mentioned that, and then I was like, "Really? Oh, okay." So I went online, saw some uh, openings, and then I was like, "Oh my god, there is an op- opening in the company!" And then I just uh, randomly, to be honest, I, I wasn't sh- even sure that I was gonna get the job, but I just, you know, threw in my CV, and then uh, and then just let it be. And after a couple of uh, months, I think I got a response from them that uh, we have seen your CV and we are interested in having you over here. So we would like to interview you for the, the job application. So uh, when is it feasible? And I was like, oh, my God, because getting just an interview in the company was like a really, really dream come true for me. Uh, I was thinking that maybe if I even don't get a job, I'm going to be happy enough that they just just called me for an interview. <laughs> so that's how big of a thing it was for me. But uh, yeah, one thing led to another and then um, they had like three interviews with me 
and uh, finally after the third interview uh, they gave me a call back and then they said that you're hired and we want you to be here uh, because those interviews that i did with them was very rigorous they actually showed me around they asked me a couple of questions like a lot of questions uh, about my background where i come from uh, what can i do for the company how can i add, add value to it uh, and of course i was uh, alhamdulillah i was confident enough of what i have done in my life and i knew that somehow i can actually be uh, a part of the company uh, but you know it was a it was very very <laughs> like a dream come true for me i i haven't spent a lot of time in sweden i have been there but mm-hmm. when i was there it didn't it didn't feel like a a hugely multicultural place not like for example the uk is but yeah. from what you're saying it sounds like there's quite a bit of diversity in in the in konigsegg itself do you think that they make an active effort to to make sure that they have that level of multiculturalism within the company i think there are almost 45 different nationalities working wow through. yeah 45 is like a lot of people mm-hmm. from different backgrounds different mindsets and coming together to produce something you know this is like a very very unique a uh, car that we create over here and it's amazing how everything just comes in and uh, and make these beautiful uh, piece of art but yeah there is a lot of diversity in the company and uh, the, the the language that we speak over there is all, also english because uh, of course not all of them speak swedish uh, but it is like the work work culture or the the people that are there they're they're the best of what they are Uh, do you think this comes from the top down? Do you think this comes from Christian himself, the realization that so. because Absolutely. it's a global company? Absolutely, I think so. Because uh, he himself is a, sort of a, a visionary and uh, how he has been and how he has worked for the company from where he started and where he is right now, uh, it's also a huge achievement and an inspiration for everybody in the world, I think. So, so without, um, I know uh, car manufacturer uh, companies are always very sensitive about these sort of things. So without getting yourself into any kind of trouble, I uh, mm-hmm. don't want you to do that. But tell us mm-hmm. what you actually do at Konigsegg, you know. Yeah, I actually work for uh, one of the teams that we have in the company called the Manufacturing Engineering Department. And what we do is that we make car uh, parts for cars, uh, which are tools and fixtures. Uh, that means that we design some very unique parts for cars uh which positions a part in a in a very specific way i i cannot go into the too much details of everything but i will just give you an overview of what we do uh so we help and support uh the whole de- whole uh mechanical design and electrical design um departments and uh, we basically i design parts so i design different kinds of jigs uh to hold the parts in position for different kinds of machining processes for uh, you know uh, for in, maybe it could be a part that needs to be having a template for drilling holes on a specific place on the car so i can i will design that or there could be a part that needs to be uh, hold in in a position to cure uh, after bonding to another part uh, so i i would design that part So that's that's like an overview of what I do but I cannot go into too much specifics because we also have uh, signed an NDA with the company yeah, that we cannot yeah. talk about too much details of the parts. Yeah. yeah. But again keeping the NDA in mind one of the amazing things or one of the fascinating things about Konigsegg is the fact that they're on the cutting edge you know they're not just like a lot of supercar a lot of boutique supercar makers yeah. what they'll do is they'll build a beautiful you know carbon tub you know and they'll yeah. they'll get it like an ls motor and ramp it up to 2000 rpm and yeah. 2000 yeah. horsepower stick yeah. it in there and off yeah. they go but konigsegg takes a very different approach yeah. i mean like the no ratio gearbox for example you know it's like, these yeah. things like just blow my mind i mean like i don't even know how they're coming up with this stuff you exactly. know but Direct what price. is it about the company culture where they're trying to do stuff that is completely off at a tangent with everybody else the vision comes from a christian himself actually he is the one who generate these ideas as well to do something different in a better and an efficient way uh so he has come up with this you know in the beginning it sort of looked like crazy ideas but you know crazy is also i think it's another name for a genius person so <laughs> he's sort of like an like a genius and uh, he comes up with these crazy ideas that we work on and then we see that how we can make it make it possible uh but yeah he i think he's the true visionary behind the company and uh, why konigsegg stands uh, apart from every other automobile company in my opinion is because we work on these 
crazy ideas. We invest a huge amount of uh, money on research and development so that we can make these ideas come true. Uh, and that's what differentiates Koenigsegg from other car companies. Do you get to drive the cars? For now, no, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Because, you know, we can risk damaging. So, that, the, that, so that's the that's the dream within the dream right now is to get your hands yeah, on the cars, yeah. right? <laughs> but there are uh, like we have a forum in, inside the company. We have we have all this list of names uh, for joy rides. So all right. I have already signed up for that uh, joy ride, but I haven't been able to do that yet. But I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, that's going to be absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's somebody what, to do. I'll tell you what, I I, I I have driven one. I've been fortunate enough to driven one oh, years awesome. ago. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That was way back in, in Dubai. And mm -hmm. uh, we, Car Magazine, because I was doing the Middle East edition of Car, and Car Magazine came over from the UK. The McLaren uh, um, SLR 722 was being launched in Dubai. So mm -hmm. they wanted to do a twin test with the Koenigsegg and the, the McLaren. So we went out into desert and we shot these two cars and we were driving them up and down and stuff like that, you know. And uh, I, I was driving the S, uh, the 722. I pulled over and the Koenigsegg went past. And mm -hmm. uh, there were flames splitting out at the back of the car, you know. And we were like, is that oh. supposed to happen? You know? <laughs> so so the guy from Koenigsegg who was with us, he was like, He's just, just as a precaution, I don't think we should drive this anymore. Like, So we parked <laughs> it up. And then yeah, the yeah. guys took off. And we were waiting for the recovery. We waited like an hour. And they took off. They left for the... Because they had to go to the airport. So they took off on the 722 in the support car. Oh, okay. And me and the guy from Koenigsegg, we were just sitting there in the desert for about an hour waiting for this <laughs> recovery to come and pick us up. But <laughs> but the thing is, we were waiting, leaning against the Koenigsegg. So we were waiting in yeah. style, you know? So. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a tremendous, tremendous car. Yeah. Farouk, it's been an absolute pleasure and an honor and an absolute delight to meet you and to talk to you. And, uh, you know, I, I, I can't wish you enough in terms of what you're doing and, and just, you know, send you all of my good wishes and hope that you just go further and further and further. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's an absolute joy to, to see somebody like you progressing, you know, within the industry that I love so much. And mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Absolutely. And I would like to thank you as well for taking the time and having me on your show. Uh, it, it has been a, an absolute pleasure talking to you. And I think I look forward to meeting you once I'm in the UK too. So uh, it really been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. A big shout out and thanks to Jay Williams over at Air Technic, who are top tier sponsors of Brown Car Guy. Check them out at Air Technic Co. UK for exhausts, brakes, suspension and body kits. Plus our other major sponsor, Nayajan Solutions. Much appreciation also to tier 4 sponsors, Muhammad Ali Humaid, Tom Conway Gordon and Reza Adil. And of course all these other guys who supporting on Patreon. Brown Car Guy is eternally grateful. Hey, think about joining them over at Patreon.com Brown Car Guy. If you can't, don't worry. Just make sure you're subscribing to the YouTube channel and website. Plus follow on social media by searching for Brown Car Guy. <laughs>